Wow. What's happening, everybody? Yes, sir. We are back. Listen, I don't even want to play with the introductions or anything. Today, we are talking about the power of prayer. I'm not even, listen, most of y'all know I go through all of these soliloquies and all of the stuff about the show and who I am. I'm not doing any of that today. I think this is going to be the most powerful episode that we've ever done. I went all the way into my deep, dark, black book to bring out one of my sisters, one of my friends. We've been knowing each other for, yeah, that long. I don't y'all need to know that, for forever. She is definitely one of the people that I look towards when we start talking about prayer. We're talking about one of the most authentic individuals I've ever ran across around the world. Now, some of you also know me that, yes, I'm, oh, let me say that. Yes, this is the Let's Talk with Stanley Doucette podcast. I am he, your host. So we got that out the way. Let's get into this topic, right? She reminds me of my grandmother in terms of the power of prayer. See, there's people that pray, and then there's people that pray. There's people that move mountains. Let me tell y'all a story about my sister real quick, y'all. Yeah, she's a member of DST. Yes, she has something called TAP, talking about uh, authentic prayer. Yes, she's a minister. Yes, she's an elder. Yes, she can pray. Yes, she can preach. Yes, she can do all of those things, right? Yes, she can articulate, and let me, let me do this for the church folk, an extra G of verse. Yes, she can do all of those things. She's a, she graduated from Howard. She got a master's. She got this. She got that. She got all of the accolades, all of the credentials. But let's get into the real thing. If you can't pray and move things, then you're just having a piece of paper. But she can move things. Let me tell you all a quick story. We was doing a meeting. We was having a meeting with a friend of mine. I'm not going to call his name. You know who I'm talking about. And Elder decided she wanted to start praying. And she started praying and she started praying. All of a sudden I was in a meeting and I couldn't talk because I was drawn to the prayer. Next thing you know, we didn't shut the meeting down, open the doors and we all in. I mean, all the way in. Listen, everybody, whatever you're doing, stop what you're doing. If you are able to stop, if you're able to pull in the parking lot, if you're able to just sit on the side of the street, and listen to what she's going to share with us on today. I'm asking you guys to please do that because it is all that. In these times where we're living, we need somebody that's going to literally be able to call fire from heaven and be able to help you move through your day. So family, y'all help me welcome to the front of the podcast, my sister, my friend, my girl, my friend that helped me get through stuff in prayer for me on for her brother every day. Because I need it. Y'all know me. I need it. Something wrong with me. My girl, Elder Takia Smith. Sis, what's going on? What's up, my brother? How you doing? Listen, the floor is yours. I don't care what you do today. <laughs> it is my pleasure to be here and to serve on your podcast. God bless you. I'm excited about the power of prayer. I'm excited. Well, you know I love prayer anyway. So anything about prayer, I'm there. Listen, you're there. Listen, listen, sis. So before I get into it, that, could you share with everybody, you know, who is Takia? I, I know who you are, but they, you know, they, they don't know. So would you mind sharing with them, please? Absolutely. I'm a child who loves God. I'm a prayer strategist. I am a ministry alignment educator, and I'm also an educator in the public school system. So I love ministry and I love science all at the same time. But my love is to truly push people and empower them to pray, not just prophetically, but also spiritually. And we got to definitely get in there and hit bullseye in prayer because we have a lot of demonic activity out here and we can't just pray these little shy prayers. Oh, Father, please, will you do? Absolutely not. You got to get in there and hit it with that spirit of boldness and knock the devil out. I like to call it. We got to hit bullseye in prayer. If you're not hitting bullseye in prayer, your prayer is not going anywhere. That's see. See, now you got me fired up already. I don't even want to look at these sheets and I just want to talk. You, you, 
Listen, you talked about so many things. First of all, you talked about your spiritual prayer. You talked about a prophetic prayer. You talk, I mean, you start already tapping in already. <laughs> you already start tapping in. So, all right. So where we are today, where does your, your particular prayers come from? What is going on when you start praying? When I start praying, I really sit. And as the Bible says, we got to be still and know that he is God. So when I pray, you know, typically a lot of people use worship music just to get into the presence of the Lord. And that's fine. And I've done that and I still continue to do that. But I definitely get into a quiet place. And because there's so much going on, so much turmoil, we got policy changes going left and right and wars and rumors of wars and shortages and shrinkflation and inflation and not enough people getting paid enough, people trying to figure out what am I going to do? Do I pay the rent? Do I pay the mortgage or do I put food on? the table. So yeah. all of that is taken into consideration because as an intercessor, you are that intermediary. You are that go-between. And so a true intercessor always feels not only just the heart of God, but the heart of the people. So as you're standing in the gap for each other and you get into that quiet place and when you pray, you begin to pray not only out of the burdens for the people, but also the burden of God. And you hear the burden of God when people pray rather than just what people want. You can tell the difference between, and this is what TAPIN stands for, the authentic prophetic prayer. You can you can tell when people just want to be heard, as the Bible says. He said, don't pray like the hypocrites do they want to stand out there in public and be out there on the streets and be out there with the bullhorns and tell everybody what prayer is. But true prayer is when you can get into that quiet place where nobody knows what you're doing, but you down there beating the enemy's head off and crushing them with your heel and telling the yeah. devil where to go. Listen, this is prayer. And it comes up out of your heart. It comes up out of your soul. And it comes from a spirit of compassion for the people. Listen, Jesus had compassion and yeah. we got to have compassion with each other and for each other. And this is one of the things that I believe is missing nowadays, my brother, as, as, as the world is evolving into different things with technology, we're yeah. losing that touch to be yeah. able to simply, like they just say, reach out and touch somebody's hand. We don't want to touch anybody's hand anymore, but we're always doing something to make sure that we are edified. Remember, thou shalt have no other gods before me, God said. Uh. So because we're trying to exalt ourselves and because we're trying to edify ourselves, God said, I will humble you. He will bring you down to that level for you to remember remember who he is in the first place. So when I take a moment and when I get into what I call a posture of prayer, I am make sure I am in that quiet place and I listen to him. I am in communication with him. And that's simply talking just like how you and I are talking now, because people really think it's a hard task. Prayer is not hard. It's a simple task. You're communicating with your heavenly father and that comes out of relationship. And so it's hard for people who do not have a relationship with God to pray because they don't understand who he is in their life and you don't understand who you are to your heavenly father. And I also pray the word of God. I learned that long time ago. The Bible says God's word will not return unto him void, but it shall accomplish that which it is being sent to. So if you want your prayer to be answered, pray the word of God. I know we hear all these nice big words that people are putting together, but when you pray God's word, God says, oh, wait a minute. I hear my daughter. I hear my son. He, he, he or she is praying my promises. And remember the promises of God, they are yes and they are amen. So when we pray the word of God, God listen, God comes to attention and he says, what do you need? I got it for you. Yes, absolutely. You know, you, you started saying that I remember as you know, you and I would pray together and be on trips and traveling and all of that stuff. And we would always say, okay, this something ain't right. This is not authentic. I'm not going to call names, but you know what I mean? This, this is, this is not authentic. This, this is not authentic. This is not authentic. So I know when we pray, and as you say, we get in a posture of mm -hmm. prayer and begin to pull the power from heaven. I believe, as you have articulated, that listening as you pray, because the Holy Ghost begins to seep in yes. and begin to help orchestrate the prayer 
that you can't even understand how to pray. That's right. My question to you as, you, you know, we helping our family is what's the best way that they can just listen as they are praying? I know that sounds crazy, but how can they listen when they are praying? They can listen, first of all, by not putting their agenda first. Ooh, yes, Lord, yes. <laughs> yes. If you just simply honor God for who he is, bless his holy name. This is how I always start out prayer. Some people just always get right into their supplication, what they need. But when we're talking about prayer, some people call it, you know, the acts of prayer. You start off with adoration. Because when you start off with adoration, you're telling God who he is, how wonderful he is in your life. And you and, and I always get excited because when you start talking about that, God is the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. He's the great I am. He's our bright and our morning star, our everlasting father, the prince of peace. Let me tell you, when we start doing that to God, you forget about everything you're about to pray for because your total concentration at this moment is on the one who can and the one who will. He is is our creator. He is Elohim, the one who created the heavens and the earth. We know him as Jehovah Shalom, the God of our peace. Listen, we can't do anything else in prayer without acknowledging the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And not only once you acknowledge him, then you got to confess, confess your sins. Ask God, listen, forgive me, Jesus. I'm sorry. I did it. I repent. And when we truly repent, and this word repent is some people think is forgiveness, but to truly repent is to have a change of mind. It yes. is a turning away. You're not going back to that old mindset. So when we're asking God that we're repenting and we're asking for forgiveness, you're not going to go back to that old man that God said, we just got rid of that. So let's not go back down that road. Let's not go back down that way again, because then we're going to go, oh Lord, forgive Forgive me. You know, I did this again and forgive me. I did that. But tr a true repentant heart has a change of mind that says, you know what, God, I've acknowledged the error of my ways and I am making a conscious effort, a conscious decision to turn and move towards you. And so after you confess, then you got to do Thanksgiving. You're going to do Thanksgiving all over again. So we say, God, you know, you just forgave me of my sins and I thank you for who you are. I love you and I believe your word. And then you move into that supplication. Because like I said before, when you remove your agenda, you yeah. begin to follow the agenda of God in prayer. And God will tell you, he will show you some things. Some people see it in visions. A lot of people see it in dreams. I know we got a lot of dreamers out there and they're trying to distinguish God is this you is it not you? God will always reveal himself to you. And the way he reveals himself to you may not be the way he reveals himself to me. And so wow. therefore, there's no one way that God would just simply reveal himself. And this is where everybody's like, well, I don't know if that's God. I don't ever tell people that they did not hear from God. I'm not God. So I don't know what you're seeing that night. And we can simply tell people based on what we've heard them say about who God is and guide them according to the word of God. So when we get to that, that area of thanksgiving and then supplication, then your supplication comes out of the heart of God because God will reveal to you what his deepest desires are for the earth realm while you're praising him, while you're giving him glory, while you're giving him honor. God would tell you that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens is him. God will tell you that you are the apple of his eye. So for yeah. everybody who is thinking God don't love me, he says you are the apple of his eye. That means you are special. He has high regard for you. And the fact that he said for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, yeah. that whosoever would believe it in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. He loves the world, my dear sisters and brothers. He loves you when you think you all messed up. He loves you when you said, oh God, I did wrong, or I didn't do what you told me to do, or I didn't simply obey. He said, I still love you, my daughter. I still love you, my son. He said, I just want you to come to me. And when we make those supplications, it's no longer your agenda, but it becomes the agenda of God that you're yeah. praying out of your heart, out of your mind, and out of your soul. Yes. So listen, 
So since we tapping in early, right? Since we tapping in early, 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 y'all. Look, I know it's two o'clock on a Monday or whatever time it is that we re roll it. I get all of that, but let me just say this. We tapped in already. Let me explain something to you. Uh, uh, help, help me explain something to the audience, uh, sis. How can they, the audience, our family, begin to pray with that level of power? See, we've been trained, we've been taught, we the no all da 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 da. That's cute, but if you have no clue mm. of what we're talking about, we have to get to the least of the. I know, I know my passion and and my purpose. I should say my purpose in life is to bring people back to God, not Amen. in a four wall church setting, because that's when we get confused. Oh yes. Oh, won't you go? Tikia, you know this. How many people in college said, like, you need to be a pastor or you need to, you know. Plenty. Yeah, yeah, Plenty. And it's in the oh, works. It's right. coming. It's, well, actually, it's here. <laughs> right. right. You do what we do, all of that stuff. But to the least of the, because if I remember correctly, G, and I'm going to put it in my own terms, Jesus went to the club. And oh, come Jesus on. started going in the club and started bringing people out the club and start changing on. their hearts and in their lives, right? And so how can we get to the least of the, because most people want to go and be pretty in church, right. but have never saved somebody, have never brought somebody back to the creator, have never really poured into them and changed their heart. Have, what was the last time you saved somebody life? I'm Say not that. talking about the quote unquote church save, literally save somebody life. Now, I'm, this is not a beat up on somebody. I'm just saying we have to continue to elevate. So how can we, sis, Talk to the least of the, if you, I don't say least of the, that makes it sound like they're bad. Not that, but somebody that's not familiar or as familiar with prayer as we are. How can we help those individuals? Because it's about lifting people up. Correct. Everything is about edification, exhortation, and comfort. You know, that deals with the spirit of prophecy. But first of all, we have to reach them, which means we have to go to them. So we're we're in a season now where everybody is, is just miraculously waiting for people to return to church, especially after COVID, as we can clearly see that's not happening. That's right. A lot of churches that were filled before COVID now are half empty, if not a quarter of the way. And so it left many ministries and many pastors scratching their heads like what happened and you know and to tell you the truth they said no lie they watching you they're just not coming back in and so the thing about it is this is how ministry started in the first place even with Jesus there were very few times in the Bible mentioned where Jesus was actually in the synagogue. And when we encounter him in the synagogue, he's there teaching others, and then he's also reading. And so therefore, once he finishes that, he goes out and gets back into the community. So yeah. the church has to go back to the place where you're now the pillar of the community, like it was back in the civil rights era. And in those days when everybody was pushing for reform and pushing for change and the way it is now, people are pushing for reform. They're pushing for, for a transformation in society. And the church has got to get back in place in being this pillar, this key uh, element in our community. So you got to get out there because if we just going to sit there and continue to plan programs the way that we've been doing, your wow. church is going to be empty when it's time to turn the lights on and you're ready with, with the choir or the praise team and nobody's sitting out there but you and your wife or you and your husband and, and the five people in your family. So when we go out there, the Bible says go into all the world and That's preach right. the gospel unto every creature. And a lot of people get that mixed up because they say, well, I'm not a preacher. I'm not an evangelist, but that's for everybody. What that's is right. your world? First of all, your world is your home. Your world is your neighborhood. Your world is com your community. The world is your job. So mm -hmm. the places where we frequent often becomes our world. This is our sphere of influence, the marketplace that God has called us to infiltrate. And that's what we're supposed to be doing, infiltrating the kingdom of God into the marketplace in which we're in. So we've been taught years ago that we could not mix the two, right? That, that's you right. know. You couldn't do work and you couldn't do ministry. So you had all these people quitting their jobs, trying to run over, jump over into ministry 
And then when it didn't work out, they realized they had to jump back into the marketplace. So the thing about that is you can merge the two. You yeah. can have ministry within the marketplace. So we remember when Jesus went looking for his disciples, he went where they were. He found them, you know, on the lake shore. He found them fishing. He found them trying to catch fish. And he told them, listen, I got a better way for you to do this. He said, mm -hmm. I got a strategy for you. He said, listen, cast your neck to the other side. See, when yeah. Jesus comes on the scene and if we are empowered with the word of God, when we speak to people, we're giving them that word of encouragement. We're giving them that word of knowledge for them to go to that next level. And the moment they encounter God through us, then they come. That's so it's right. almost like we got to go back to that house ministry. We got to go back to saying, hey, sis, how you doing? Let me come over. Let me pray for you and your family. You know, they may tell you, hey, we don't have groceries for the day. And you know you got it. Go buy them a couple of days worth of groceries, if not a week worth of grocery. Put it on a doorstep, ring the doorbell and get in your car and call it a day. We have to go back to where ministry is authentic and ministry is real. So my answer to that would be, we have to go where they are. And so I know you talked about clubbing. So, you know, many clubs today, many Christians are saying, I wouldn't step foot in a club dealing with the right. violence that comes along with the clubs today. But you encounter those same people in the grocery store. You encounter those same people in the laundromat. No matter where you are, you could be dropping your child off to school and you got a parent there who is distressed. And you can have an encouraging word for that person that would just simply transform and change their life forever. Sis, let me tell you something that happened a few days ago. This, 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 you're going to love this, right? I'm not going to get into names and all that stuff. But let me just share this. It was a, a, a specific young lady that you know she started started pricking my heart to get in touch with her you know to talk to her when i would call um she would say i'll hit you back you know those types of things now at the time now girl starts speaking to me like you know basically she's running okay got it mm -hmm. we we gonna connect right so i talked to one of my business partners and we was just talking about it and then she brought her name up mm -hmm. and she was like we need to talk to her yeah we do so you know <laughs> Days go on and so on. And then eventually we connect with her. So a few days ago, we connected with her. And instantaneously, it fell. Mm. I mean, the power fell instantaneously. My God, my God. This is what happened. Not only did she say the last time we prayed with her, it opened her up. And she was set free. Mm. This particular time, she said she got ideas from business Ooh. she got a potential business partner or come on jesus she have um uh she opened up some other thoughts she asked me now this is not about me that i'm not trying to be all that so i just want you to guys to understand she asked me some for some clarity on some things she got clarity she got revelation she got insight and then we shared a story with her and before we finish we, of course, you know, we prayed. And then she said at the end of the call, she just said, I'm just basking in mm. his glory, right? But if we never went to her, she would have missed a, bit, a potential business partner. She would have yes. missed all of the revelation, the clarity, all that stuff. So what yes. you're saying, we do have people that actually live that. Yes. that mean, also, with that being said, do you think people pray to gain control or do you think people pray to release control? Now, those, those are two loaded questions right there. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <I'm laughs> they are loaded. And, and let me start with this. We're taught that the Bible says in Mark 11, you know, 22 through 24, have faith in God, whatsoever things you desire. When you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have whatsoever you say. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times this scripture can be taken out of context where a lot of people say, hey, the Bible says I can I can uh, have whatever I say and what I pray. Yes, you can. But a lot of people pray it to manipulate God. Ooh. 
<laughs> because you're manipulating God to get what you want. Now, the Bible says, if you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. But we just love to say, God, you said you will give me the desires of my heart and he will. But you forgot the first part of that scripture. You right. got to delight yourself in him. You got to spend time with him. You got to read his word. You got to worship. You got to know the desires that God has for you in order for you to receive, receive the desires that you want. Because a lot of times your desires is not what he has for you. That's right. God is interested in prospering us. This is why the Bible says, brethren, I wish that above all things that you will prosper, be in health, even as your soul prospers. So listen, we got a lot of people out here who are spending their health, getting their wealth, and that when they get older, they're going to spend their wealth getting their health. Listen, we got to have this balance here. Everybody's out there getting the bag. I ain't mad at you. Go get the bag. But the don't bag. do it at your expense of your health. Don't do it and leave God outside of it. So many people do pray to gain control. Now, this is where the line has to be drawn because you're not God. That's right. That's cool. You're not God. So you got to be careful how we are praying these prayers because a lot of people hey. God is not a magic genie. You're not just going to rub, you know, that his magic belly and just say, God, this is what I want. And poof, it's there. No. If it's not in the will of God for you, it will not manifest. It will not come to pass. But I do believe that when we pray, we pray to give God control because God says we have free will. Oh, yeah. He says, choose ye this day. Whom you going to serve? He said, I'm not going to force you. That's why I say God is a perfect gentleman. He's not going to force anything on us. He said, every morning you wake up, you got a choice. Who are you going to serve today? Are you going to serve me or are you going to serve mammon? Are you going to serve money? He said, you can't serve the two. But if you serve me, the money will come. This is why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. What are the things? The money, uh, um, your health, your strength. You know, if you want the houses, the cars, the things that you desire, but also what about peace? We're always looking for tangible things, things that we can have, things that we can drive, things that we can show off. But what about the things that people can't see that comes in here? Peace, joy, love, happiness. Yeah. Yeah. What does the Bible say? Uh, the true kingdom is not meat, but the true kingdom is righteousness and joy, peace. Come on now. Listen, you, you talk about that peace that we desire, right, sis? Yes. You talk about that peace that surpasses all understanding. You talk understand. about that peace that get in you. It yes. doesn't matter nothing about a house, a car, a vehicle, a man, or a woman. But when that peace sits in you, you yes. know God is there. Think about this. When we, you and I connect and we traveling together and we doing conferences and all of that stuff. But when we come together, and we just you and I began to talk and converse. There is a level of peace that comes there yes. that is calming. It's no fake. It's no fictitious. It's like, sis, what's up? How are you? That's right. Everybody see us laughing and smiling when they're stressed. It's a yeah. conference. We're edifying yeah. the, the kingdom. And yeah. you're talking, and you running around stressed and pulling your hair out your head and jumping over this. Are you kidding me? And they try to figure out why y'all laughing and smiling. Hey. Do you know who we are serving today? Come on, Listen, come on. When you talk about peace, because you get me excited. Now, when you start talking about that level of peace, sis, I'm going to be honest. I have never experienced that level of peace, but with, I think, two people. Mm. Right? Now, that's not saying others can't have it. Correct, correct. But when you dig into that peace, and you literally let that peace that you and I are talking about sit down yeah. on you. Look here, you, you're not stressed. That's it. You can care less about a bill. You Come can on. care less about a car, a house, a trophy, uh, uh, any of that stuff. Because all of a sudden, mm. 
Elohim yes. decides to walk in your space. That's it. And That's then it. you start seeing a glory cloud. I'm That's not gonna it. go on a glory cloud, but I can't go there. Lord, you gonna get me something, right? And and I remember a young lady uh, recently experienced the glory cloud herself for the first time, mm. and to see her face and mm. what that represents. I uh, listen, <laughs> sis. It her entire life is different. It's, it's just different. So to, to the audience, I know you hear us talking. It's, it's my sister, so y'all forgive us. We we just having us a good old time. Yes, Listen, Lord. I want to ask this question, because a lot of people out there, they want to pray and they get into prayer, but they get distracted. Mm. Right? How can we not be distracted when we are praying? Because I, I don't want I don't want people to get there and start talking like, oh, I don't, you know, when I pray, I don't get distracted. That's a lie. Then sometimes the stuff will come in, you kind of get off and you're like, okay, I gotta come on back. No. How do we what do we do that we don't have to get distracted? First of all, we gotta be real with ourselves that when we come into the space of prayer, yeah. we have to be willing for that moment that we're in prayer to literally leave everything out. Yeah. You got to em- you have to empty yourself cuz trust me we've all been there especially growing in God and even sometimes when when we pray subconsciously we're like okay I got a meeting at five o'clock but you're trying to pray for somebody or you could be driving in the car and you're trying to figure out which way to go next but you really have to get into like when I call the posture of prayer that you literally leave everything behind leave it outside and then say okay God is me and you and the person that I'm praying for or the people that we are praying with. So when you're talking about truly the glory of God coming into a space, that means all hearts and minds are on one accord. Because I can't be praying for you right now and I'm subconsciously thinking about what I'm about to cook for dinner. Then wow. then it just does not make any sense. And then sometimes that's where it just kind of seem a little redundant for people because, and then you can't overthink prayer. I think a lot of times people want to sound deep in prayer because they may not know the word or, or have all of the word. I just say, just be yourself in prayer. I know they, people ask me all the time, especially when I'm teaching, um, on prayer in different settings. How did I learn to pray like this? I said, the Bible, first of all, says pray without ceasing. So I have not stopped praying. And so, and I know the Bible says when Jesus was telling his disciples, when he was about to, you know, give up the ghost, he said, could y'all not just pray with me for one hour? And so people are are trying to figure out, oh my God, I got to pray for an hour. No, you don't. (laughs) <laughs> no, you don't. Just start somewhere. And the yeah. more you do it, your prayer life, you're adding the word of God. And when you're adding the word of God and you're learning more of the word of God, then you will realize that after a while, hey, I prayed 10 minutes. Hey, I prayed 15 minutes. Boop, I'm up to 30. And then when you can get up and you you are literally doing a whole prayer conference and you be, you're praying for a whole hour without you even knowing is because now you know the heart of God. And that's what you begin to pray. But, but I really want to encourage people to Prayer is not intimidating. And I think yeah. it scares a lot of people um, when we're talking about prayer and they always want to find the prayer strategist and the prayer guru. But you are the prayer warrior. You are the intercessor. God has equipped and called each and every one of us to be an intercessor. So a lot of people, and it's sad even today that when we're calling for prayer meetings and when we see prayer conferences and we're talking about prayer ministries, it's just three women in church. You don't see any men. And then the three women are usually the mother's boy and maybe somebody else who truly loves prayer. And the whole ministry is dependent upon these three people to come in and pray. And then we're wearing the mother's boy out because everybody's calling mother. Everybody's calling evangelist this and everybody's calling so-and-so that. And now that person is being inundated with everybody's prayer requests, all because we have not been empowered to believe that we have the same prayer life. If you're not empowered to believe that, you won't do it. That's it. You won't do it. You will always call somebody else. 
Oh. And then a lot of times when we call people and they don't answer, that's because God says, I want you to open up your mouth. I want to hear from you. Please open your mouth. That's it. And then when you start praying, don't try to mimic Elder Smith. Don't do Please it. Please don't. Don't try to <laughs> mimic me. Don't try to mimic my grandmother or your grandmother, or your pastor, your cousin. You be authentic to yourself. Listen, Absolutely. Sister, two things I want to do. Um, number one, I know you have some stuff coming up. Please share with the family. Um, the, we we we're gonna do a part two. I, I just I, we we got to do a part two. Amen. <laughs> we got to do a part two. Lord, we're about to set this thing on fire. <laughs> I'm trying to contain myself, but I'm about to break YouTube on this one. We ah, okay? Just come on back. Listen, so first of all, I know you have a, a something coming up. You want to share with the audience what you have coming up? Because I'm about to lose it in a second. Sure, absolutely. Saturday, July 23rd, right here in Miami, Florida. I am hosting the Tap In Prayer Symposium. Tap In means the authentic prophetic prayer. And this year, we are talking about kingdom business. We're learning how to pivot in prayer. God is saying we have to restructure everything that we've learned how to do. He said, no, we got to come in and make some tweaks to these things because as we know, there is an impending recession and God is teaching us how to be recession proof. And always, if you're in the kingdom of God, then we always say the recession never hits us. The recession never touched us because even though we're in the world, we're not of the world. The government that we serve is the kingdom government. We serve a God and he is our creator. And so I would love for everybody to join me Saturday, July 23rd, right here. If you need an, uh, an excuse to come to Miami, Florida, this will be your excuse. The sun is shining despite, you know, a little couple of thunderstorms every now and then. But come on in and be refreshed, be restored, be rejuvenated, rejuvenated, not only as an intercessor, but as simply a child of God and learn the strategies that God is teaching us for this upcoming season. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Listen, you got to do a New Orleans call for me and then. You, sure. you gotta take us out in prayer. You, you listen. You, we gotta go in. I normally wouldn't do it, but today we going in. I, yeah, y'all <laughs> get ready, get ready. Like uh, Bishop Jason say, get ready, get ready, get ready. Absolutely. Uh, so listen, you gotta do this for me. I know you're elder and all of that stuff, but you got to do the New Orleans call for me. You ready? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, sis. What's Come the on. new all this call? All right. So I'm going to do it first, and then you do it behind me. You ready? <laughs> yeah. Let's go. All right. You ready? Okay. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Listen, let's talk to Stanley Duset. Got bishops and elders on here saying, wow. <laughs> Y'all know I'm crazy. But listen, sis, we have a lot of fun. I love you, love you, love you. Thank you Absolutely. So much. Love you too, my brother. But this is what I want to do. So the last few minutes, I'm going to step away and just let you go ahead and just pray for the people for a couple moments. And then we're going to go ahead and end off. So uh, at your, whenever you're ready, just go ahead on and as I like to say, just tap in. Amen. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord God, we truly come before you right now just to say thank you. We come to give you praise. We come to give you glory. We come to give you honor. Oh, Father God, we thank you for being Elohim. We thank you for being El Shaddai. Thank you, Lord God, for being Emmanuel, the God that is with us. We thank you to Heavenly Father for being Jehovah Jireh. You are our bright and our morning star. And Lord God, we ask for forgiveness, Daddy. Forgive us for all of the sins, Father, that we have committed by thought by word, by deed, against your divine majesty. Father, we're sorry. We do repent. Search our hearts, so God, try us. And Lord God, if and when you find any wicked way on the inside of us, lead us to Heavenly Father into the way of everlasting. Lord God, we yield ourselves to you right now to Heavenly Father. We do repent. We have a change of mind. And Lord God, we thank you right now that everywhere that our feet shall trod, you said you will give us the land. God, you said 
that you will make our feet as hinds feet, that you will cause us to run through troops and leap over walls. Lord God, right now, as I pray for my brothers and my sisters, Lord God, I pray to Heavenly Father in the precious name of Jesus, that you will cover them, oh God, from the crown of their heads to the soles of their feet, oh God. Father, we plead the blood, the blood, the blood. We plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, over their families, over their households. Right now, Daddy, in the precious name of Jesus, and we do decree and declare that no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper and nothing, absolutely nothing by any means shall harm them, oh God. Father, I pray that you would touch everything concerning my sisters, touch everything that is concerning my brothers, cover their households right now, oh God, in the precious name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray that you will give them wisdom. I pray that you will give them knowledge. I pray that you will give them understanding, even Lord God, when the world is in a, in a spirit of confusion. For God, we know that you are not the author of confusion, but you are the God of peace. And this is what we need right now to Heavenly Father. We need your peace. God, your word says, my peace, I leave with you. And God, you said that you will give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. So it doesn't matter what Supreme Court decision gets overturned. It doesn't matter what they're trying to implement. It doesn't matter whether or not we got shrinkflation or inflation to Heavenly Father. It doesn't matter whether or not our income rises or not. But what matters is our hope and our faith in you. For God, your word says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For with out faith. It is impossible to please the Lord. Lord God, we thank you right now to Heavenly Father that because we just want to be pleasing in your sight, oh God. Father, we thank you that you've given us the power to tread over the serpent and over the scorpion and over all the power of the enemy. And Lord God, right now, I bind every spirit of witchcraft that will come upon your children right now, oh God, every spirit of manipulation, every spirit of control to Heavenly Father that will try to rule your lives of your children, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. We bind these demonic forces and we superimpose it with your spirit, oh God, your love, your power, and your mind. Anoint us, so oh God, for your glory. Father, we thank you right now for that person to Heavenly Father who is feeling the spirit of depression or oppression, oh God. Father, I thank you to Heavenly Father we that you are removing the spirit of depression and oppression. Lord God, we thank you right now that you're giving us the mind of Christ. For God, your word says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. God, we think like you. We talk like you. We walk like you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. And Lord God, we thank you that your word says, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and we shall have whatsoever we say. And so, Lord God, I pray for every household to Heavenly Father that there will be nothing missing nothing lacking, nothing broken in their lives to Heavenly Father, because they're putting their trust and their confidence in you. For your word says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. But in all thy ways, God, you tell us to acknowledge you and you shall direct our path. And Lord God, I thank you right now that as you're guiding them to Heavenly Father, your Holy Spirit said that he will lead us and guide us into all truth. And this is what we need right now in a world of confusion. We need truth. What is the truth. The truth is the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And nobody can come unto the Father but by him. So even right now, if somebody does not know you, Lord Jesus, I pray to Heavenly Father that they will simply accept you right now as their Lord and Savior, oh God, that they believe in their heart and and confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus that he died on the cross, rose again with all power in his hand, and that now he is sitting in heaven at the right side of our Father God. And so, Father, I thank you that because that when we do this, oh God, your word says that we are saved. And somebody today, oh God, needs to experience you in another way. Lord God, I pray that you will show yourself strong in their lives. God, I pray that you will do a supernatural 
spiritual work in their body, Lord God, where they have been told about cancer, where they have been told about COVID, where they have been told about bronchitis and asthma and multiple sclerosis and lupus, the Heavenly Father, and heart attacks and strokes. We know, Father God, even rheumatoid arthritis, you are the God over every disease, oh God. And so to Heavenly Father, you are the God that healeth us. And so to Heavenly Father, your word says you were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And by your stripes, we are already healed. So Lord God, I thank you for the healing of my brothers. I thank you for the healing of my sisters. Lord God, in the precious name of Jesus, whether physically, emotionally, financially, Lord God, in the precious name of Jesus, thank you for anointing and blessing the works of our hands. And Father God, we will forever give your name, the praise, the glory, and the honor. And it's in your precious son, Jesus' name we pray. And we say amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. sis. Thank you. Listen, she's available for speaking engagements. She's available for doing her tap conference at your mm -hmm. locations, wherever you want it to go. She's traveled. She travels. Guys, listen, if you need to get in touch with Elder Takia Smith, you can go to my website, Let's Talk with Stanley Doucette.com. Just scroll right under the bio. I think it's under the bio or the, the description of the show. Click on our website. Uh, let's talk with Stanley D at gmail.com. Shoot me a message and I will make sure your message gets to you. If you need prayer, you can do the same thing. I'm going to give yes. you the email directly if you just want to go directly to the email. Go to let's talk with Stanley D at gmail.com. L E T S T A L K W I T H S T A N L E Y D as in David at gmail.com. Shoot us a message and we will make sure. You are in touch directly with Elder Takia Smith. I'm not going through her administrator. We're going to go straight to the throne and allow her to do what she does. Guys, listen, this has been absolutely empowering. Go to all of my social media platforms. You're going to get this. But listen, make sure you share this with as many people as possible. Not for numbers, but so many people need this. So many people need this. So, uh, sis... I appreciate you as always. You know we're doing a part two. We might just get on and just start praying through the whole podcast. So Amen. we're we going to do a part two for the power of prayer. I didn't threw the whole script out the window. I don't know where we are in the script. But listen, I appreciate you so much. So, so much. So many other things we want to talk about the prophetic. We want to talk about yeah, just, just so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's my pleasure. Thank you. To, if everybody that's going to the TAP conference, make sure you hit her up, hit me up, whatever it is. Let's talk with stanleydoucette.com. Scroll down, click on the email, shoot us a message, or just go straight to the website, excuse me, the email, shoot us a message. I will make sure she gets the message, all right? So listen, sis, I appreciate you. We're going to take it on back to the street. Let's get on out of here. And we are doing a part two coming soon. Appreciate you yes. guys. Love y'all. See y'all soon. God bless. Blessings.